So when considering compensation from a hospital, you'll see many different options. Uh, as most physicians start off, there is some sort of guaranteed base pay that's going to be provided, and that's gonna cover a set amount of work, and then likely any additional work that you produce over that will be compensated based on a work RVU, or relative value unit. If you're unfamiliar with what a relative value unit is, this is a value set by our government, specifically within Medicare and CMS, where they look at uh, physician uh, compensation as one piece. They also look at what the procedure actually costs. So what is the practice expense? And then what should be the malpractice contribution to that procedure? So how much risk does it have? They then take those three values and they add them together. And then there's a multiplier based on your geography. So they take into consideration cost of living differences between say California and Kansas and they'll put that multiplier onto that to apply a certain RVU value for everything that you do as a physician. So when a hospital decides to compensate you for your work, again, it's oftentimes gonna be based upon that RVU value. Every hospital will take that value into consideration and give you a set amount of dollars for each RVU produced. And so, for example, one procedure may be worth very few RVUs if it doesn't take you much time or if it's low risk versus a major surgery might be worth many, many RVUs, which you'd be compensated more. Each hospital, again, is going to provide you a, a number, a dollar amount for that RVU, oftentimes based on survey data. And so survey data can be from Sullivan and Cotter, it can be from um, AMGA or the MGMA, there's many different sources out there that they look to see what is the average compensation for each RVU for your specific specialty, for your location. And a lot of hospitals will take some sort of combination of this data to derive it a value to give to you. When you talk about contracts and how they can change those, again, you could have a base pay that pays you for say a set amount of RVUs. So you could get paid, let's say you're a doctor that's worth half a million dollars. You could get paid 250,000 for the first 8,000 RVUs you do. And then any additional RVU that you produce over that might pay you at a set rate of $60 an RVU, just as an example. Other hospitals may look at this situation and say, we're just gonna pay you a flat rate for every RVU that you do. For every piece of work you do, we're paying you the same the entire time. Another option might be for them to create steps and say, well, for the first thousand RVUs, we're gonna pay you this. For the next thousand RVUs, we're gonna pay you this. For the next thousand RVUs, and so on and so forth. So it can get a little bit complicated. You just need to know within your contract how they plan to pay you up front, and then how that contract can change or evolve over time as you spend time with that facility. So one good question might be, is one way better than another? I think it depends on your own work ethic and what you plan on doing. If you're a physician and you're gonna be working in the 90th percentile for all other physicians in your specialty, then you wanna pay, be paid for everything that you do. If you're a physician and you plan on taking a lot of vacation and you think, you know, the 50th percentile, that's just fine with me. I'll sit right there. Well, maybe you wanna negotiate for a better base pay and build that up and then really not worry about having to stress and push yourself beyond what your base is covering. A lot of times hospitals will change or adjust these contracts over time. So again, what you might be brought in on, maybe a base amount of money and then a certain amount per RVU early on. Based on your productivity and what the hospital sees that maybe they're making on you or losing on you, that can be adjusted. And so you need to know going into that, when will it be adjusted? And what terms do you have to help negotiate with that? What data will be used? And how much negotiating power will you have? If you end up being a very productive physician for this, you would like to think you would have more say-so at that table. But if they can make these changes without your consent, if your contract says that they can make adjustments uh, without your consent, then, then that's a problem.